Hey there, I got a direct message from Alice about family and safety cues I'm going to dig into. My name is Justin Sinceri. I'm a therapist, a coach, and the creator of the Polyvagal Trauma Relief System. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken. This is where I teach you how to live with more calm, confidence, and connection without psychobabble or woo-woo. All right, so Alice sent me this uh, DM from Inst on Instagram a while back. I don't check Instagram very often at all. It's like the worst way to communicate with me. Email is probably the best. I'll have a link in the description for my email. She says, the problem I'm having is that my safety cues, and then she puts in parentheses, in my normal state. The problem I'm having is my safety cues in my normal state would be family or close friends, like a call to mom, etc. But it's like they feel so closed off, and I don't feel a sense of relief or safe as I normally would, so that's confusing to me. Alice, thank you for the question. What could be happening in general, and Alice, I don't know you. I'm not talking about you. I'm just, when I say you, I'm, I'm talking in general here. When we're in a safety state, and actually, I think that's what you mean by normal state. And first off, all of our states are normal. The safety state's normal. Flight fight's normal. Shutdown is normal. Even freeze is normal. All of these things evolved within us uh, over millennia or, or whatever for a very long time. They all evolved within us to in, to uh, increase the chances of survival or to optimize our resources based on what's happening in any given situation. So they're all normal. Safety state might feel better, but it's no more normal than the other states. Just at least as a way to like normalize, as a way to think about things a little bit differently with less judgment. So that's just me nitpicking maybe, but I got to put that out there. So Alice says the typical safety cues, those interpersonal ones, with other people don't feel like safety cues when she's dysregulated. So there's two things I want to address here. The first one is that, and I don't think Alice is saying this, but the first thing is that some people are flat out not safety cues. Some people might give you danger cues. They might be aggressive. They might be super anxious. They might be very withdrawn and shut down. All of these serve to take us away from our, a little, or they can, take us away from our own safety state. So all these can be mildly to overtly dysregulating. So if people in your life that you think should be safety cues, like a spouse, significant other, children, parents, these, these might be people that you would want to go to to feel safe, but the reality is they might not be that person. So that, that's one aspect of this is if, if you're hoping that, and again, I'm saying you in general, if you're hoping or expecting that someone should be a safety cue and they're not, that's just the way it is. But I don't think that's what Alice is saying here. The other side of this is that the other, the people in her life are safety cues, are unable to receive it. That's the other end of this. And what happens is when you're in your safety state, you can receive that. That's probably not hard to, to be close to someone, to hug, to smile, to make eye contact with them. But when you're not in your safety state, when you're in more of a dysregulated defensive state, flight, fight, shutdown, freeze, when you're in more of a dysregulated defensive state, it's really hard to accept safety cues. It's not like something you choose. This is all unconscious. This is all done through neuroception. If you don't know what that is or what the polyvagal theory is, go to my polyvagal 101 nine episode series on my podcast. There'll be a link in the description for you. So if you're not in your safety state and you're in more of a defensive state, it's hard to detect safety even when it's there. So that might be kind of what she's expressing here. The way that it might be helpful to think about this is that whatever state you're in, that becomes your filter for the world. So if you're in a safety state, the world sends its cues at you. They pass through the filter and they get to you. You're probably going to handle things more calmly, more confidently. You're probably going to feel more connected. That's what the safety state does. Especially if you have a strong anchoring in your safety state, you'll be able to maintain those experiences. Even with people who are challenging your safety state, you're more likely to stay anchored in your safety state. But still, the world's going to send cues at you and it's going to get filtered through your state. So when someone sends you a cue of slight defensive activation, your safety state will filter that and you'll have empathy. You may be able, be able to relate. You might be able to help them problem solve. That's different than the, you know, then filtering the world through a defensive state. If you're in flight fight and the world sends its cues at you, you're going to filter them through a lens or a filter of danger. You're going to already be anxious and aggressive or and or aggressive. 
So, you know, no matter what the world sends at you, even the people that you care about, when they say something or even smile, it's going to pass through or hug you or whatever. It's going to pass through that filter of flight fight or of shutdown or of freeze. So even though they haven't changed on their end, the signals they're sending are coming through that defensive state filter that changes your reception of those cues, your state and your state's filter changes how you receive the cues from the world. But we're talking about other people. Those interpersonal cues will change. You'll experience them differently, even though the other person didn't say it differently, didn't intend it differently. On your end, you're receiving it differently. So these other people in your life can still be safety cues, but on your end, it's kind of up to you to first practice being a safety, practice anchoring safety, build the strength of your safety state. As you do that, when you're in a defensive state, it'll be more tolerable. Your safety state will help to keep the intensity of your dysregulation or of your defensive state at a minimum. It's, it's going to help soften the intensity of it. And so if that's true, then you'll be able to anchor in safety and then allow a little bit of that defensive activation and listen to what you need. And maybe you need to go get a hug from someone and you'll be able to say, hey, I'm really stressed out. I need a hug. Maybe you'll you know, realize that you need to be alone and you'll tell the people in your life, I care about you. I'm not able to receive it right now. Just give me some time to be alone and quiet and, and I'll come to you uh, when I'm ready to. But that requires that you have some level of self-regulation first. And if you have enough self-regulation, then you can listen to what you need and and speak confidently about what you need with other people. Not not demanding it, but just telling them, you know, where you're at and creating that healthy boundary and also letting them know, you know, where, where you're at and, and what to expect from you. And I guess that's that's the ideal. It's something that we you could work towards. It's not overnight. Building the strength of your safety state does take a while, but it's super important in all this self-development and trauma recovery stuff. So ideally you have people in your life or pets that you're receiving safety cues from, fantastic. But if you're in a state where you're too dysregulated and you can't receive the interpersonal safety cues, then you might rely instead on a couple other avenues, one of those being the environmental safety cues. So maybe being with people is not working out for you, and instead you have to receive safety from the environment. I really encourage you, and this is something I work on with my students in building safety anchors, is identifying a safety spot in your home, a place you can go to where you feel grounded or more grounded, more connected. You feel more anchored in your safety state. So if you can't get it from people, then turn to the environment. If you can't get it from the environment, then turn to movements, music, thoughts in your brain. There's, there's a bunch of different ways you can anchor in safety. And I teach all those in my course. I can't go into it here. Thank you, Alice, for the question. And thank you, viewer, for hanging out and watching. If you're interested in joining me and my private community and in my trauma recovery courses, follow the link in the description. It's justinlmft.com slash total access. Again, justinlmft.com slash total access. You'll get access, total access to my trauma recovery courses, three of them. You get access to my private community as well. It's a really great little group of people who are supportive and encouraging and help each other out with really healthy boundaries, but also with pictures of their plants and their pets every now and again. Hope to see you there. Bye. This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you are experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. More resources are available in the description of this episode and in the footer of justinlmft.com.